I am extremely excited for the guests that I've got today. Man's got a big smile in his face all the way from Dubai. <laughs> this is the one, the only one. What are you saying, bro? I'm good, man. Good to see you again, brother. Thank you so much for inviting me to Thank your you. setup as well. You've got a nice thing going on here. Yeah, well, we're just trying, man. You know what I mean? Like, uh, we've, we're have we just trying to just build, man, just like yourself. Um, how was your flight? Yeah, so the one in 6,000 dirhams yeah. uh, Emirates did. So I caught a budget airline on the way back. Yeah, yeah. Connected flight stopped off in Istanbul, yeah. in Turkey. And um, yeah, it's a three-hour connect, so all in all 12 hours. Yeah. But yeah. I'm a never, long flight for you then? Long flight. I'm never flying yeah. Wizz Air again. <laughs> 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 I'd rather pay the 6,000 dirham. At least I'll put my chair back a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I don't give a joke, but listen, yeah, no, no, I, I do love like Emirates flights, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. man. The food's good, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Yeah, man. Listen, I, I remember the last time, yeah, that me and the boys went out there. Um, November, me, Ravi, uh, Indy went out there. Um, Ravi, I booked it and Ravi's vegetarian. I didn't tell him that. The, what, the airline? Yeah, I didn't You're tell joking. him. You're joking. Nah, and then imagine they've come out here with this food, bro. Ravi's food, which wasn't vegetarian food. But so man's got a free meal. I got two meals, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's enough of protein for you, eh? Yo, bare protein, bro. <laughs> and I was still hungry, bro. But it's, it's interesting. So I, I thought that I would invite you on here because I, like, I know quite a lot about you. You're a very inspirational person and you have had a massive impact on a lot of people that I know, bro. You know, from the same city as well. And I love to see people do really well. But I wanted people to really understand you, the person, not just you, the coach, because you're an excellent coach. Like I see you doing your thing. I see the motivation that you post on your story every single day. Don't, in fact, those who haven't got you on Instagram, what is your Instagram handle? Uh, it's Robbie's Health and Wellbeing. Love that. Yeah, man. Straight to the point, innit? Straight to the point, bro. I left it open because obviously um, the mental health side of things yeah. and addiction. Yeah. So if it was just anything to do with fitness, it'd yeah. be limited to fitness. Yeah. So if I leave it open as Robbie's health and well-being, yeah. what's well-being? Mental, physical, spiritual, yeah. emotional, all that stuff. Covers so many angles. Yeah, man. So for those that don't know you, Robbie, explain who you are. I think you've just done that for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can go even deeper than that. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, I'm, I'm 34 years old and, um, you know, I, I was a gas engineer. Mad. Yeah, man. I did uh, boilers for 13 years. Yeah, man. And like, obviously, gym's been a big part of my my, my life. I've always, yeah. you know, gone to the gym or lifted weights and, yeah. you know, got involved in the, the fitness side of things. However, when I was doing the boilers, yeah, my health was going the opposite way. You know, I was like smoking loads of cigarettes. I was eating uh, out on the ho- out on the roads for like 12, 16 hours a day up wow. in the country. Yeah, yeah. And I couldn't even get to the gym. So, you know, I was just thinking about the gym, uh, but doing the opposite. Yeah. You know, uh, well, why do you think it was so difficult for you to keep your fitness at a high point with the element of traveling 12 to 16 hours a day? Um a lot of it's to do with, I'd say, willingness more than anything. You know, um, it's easy to pass blame and say, oh, I'm busy. But, you know, um, people are busy. They're very successful and they still manage to have their exercise, you know. But I think it was like the wrong time in my life as well. Yeah. Because I was too busy chasing money. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the money was coming. But, you know, uh, my priorities were everywhere. There's a lot of unmanageability, my yeah. timekeeping, you know, and it, over the through life experiences yeah. um, it's getting better man I, love yeah, I, I, I like to think it is anyway. yeah. <laughs> listen we all hope that but you were late today yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey listen I was born like two two weeks late so you know what I'm Bro, I, I know about black man timing and I got Indian friends but yo your Indian timing <laughs> yeah, yo man. bro it's yeah, questionable man, but I hear that already <laughs> <laughs> you are yeah I, I, can't, I can't drop it on you too much because you are here bro and I appreciate that yeah, man, you know man. so you spoke about a few massive things here. You spoke that you were a gas engineer. Yeah. You know, what was a normal day look like then? The normal day was sometimes I have to go down to London. Yeah. So I have to be up at four o'clock in the morning. Wow. Yeah. Get onto that. You want to miss all the M6 traffic through Birmingham and obviously you get to London. Yeah. More traffic. So we had to be in the customers' houses for 8 a.m. Whoa. Yeah. Whether we're in South London or up in Newcastle upon Tyne. Newcastle, we had to get up at three. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, yeah. So um, we'd be out there, collect all our stuff from the local merchants, whether it's Plum Centre and other places like Travis Perkins and whatever. Um, and yeah, just crack on with the day. And all day we're just working in the customer's house. Yeah, it's bad. That, that is absolutely crazy. So you were doing that for 13 years? Yeah, for, well, on and off. It yeah. was in a flat out 13, obviously, yeah. when I first got qualified, I was building up experience. Yeah. And then I started to go on my own. 
Okay. Uh, and then I started to have a few lads working for me and paying them cash in hand. I'd love that. Yeah, man. Cash in hand, great, isn't it? Yeah, man, it's lovely. Cash is king. <laughs> cash is king. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we don't do that anymore. Pay <laughs> <laughs> our taxes on time. Yeah, yeah. All of them things. But now it's, it's, it's really good. that it's, it's a massive moment when you have been in a position of managing people as well. And um, so I understand that stress. You know, the, the it's, it's so interesting to see the characteristics that you had getting up at 4 a.m non-negotiable because you had to go to work you know and these are characteristics in people that we look for to build success they already had these components in them a willingness of seeing a task and doing whatever it takes to complete it you you spoke about the fact that if you didn't get up on time then you're going to hit obstacle course obstacle course would be traffic on the m6 you know and you put you put yourself in the best position to avoid that and it's so interesting when we speak about fitness with this because the characteristics, again, are there. People will look at life and they will say, well, I can either prepare myself to win or I will just look at the day and I'll take it as it is. As it is. Those that take each day as it is. Hope for the best. Hope for the best. Yeah, man. But hoping doesn't always qualify you to win. No, nah, of course not. But if you prepare yourself, you qualify to win. And, and this is interesting. So, so you've done that for 13 years. Like, how did you become a PT? Like, how did P personal training come about? So for me, right, I just, I love the gym. Yeah. Right. The, by the way, some yeah. days when I was driving to London, yeah. I'd make sure that I'd get a quick power hour in yeah. before if I had rested properly, yeah. I'd still go to the gym and then, love that. then hit the road, get my shower on, whatever, and hit the road, yeah. Um, but it's, it's about dedication. consistency, like you already know. Yeah. But um, yeah, back to I'm um, digressing. What you asked was how did I be, what made me become a PT? Yeah. So for me, um, I like helping people. Yeah. That's in my nature. You know, I've always had that. Yeah. Uh, I love the gym environment too. And this is part and parcel of why yeah. I wanted to become a PT. Not just that I hated my job as well. Yeah. And I feel like if you you're in a career that you hate and you don't like doing it, yeah. what's the point? You're wasting what is time. The point? Life's too short. Life is too short. You know, and uh, I just thought let's just get requalified. And obviously yeah. when I started doing my course, well, the, the pandemic stuff happened, yeah. didn't it? And um, Crazy. yeah, gym started shutting, PTs were like yeah. not working and stuff. I seen how hard it was for yeah. you as well. Yeah. And, um, you know, I just thought, am I doing the right thing? So I reverted back into the central heating and thought, no, yeah. it's not the right thing for me to be doing. And obviously all the lockdowns and stuff started to happen yeah. and that, you know, they, they, uh, they stopped. And then I just picked pick the, pick the course back up again and got qualified. And, Love that. Um, yeah, man, I just jumped, jumped straight into D Dubai. Mad that is. Like, <laughs> crazy that is. I literally remember you when I was working at Pure Gym Wolf Self and I remember this, this tall guy yourself walking in with a massive smile on your face um, and you had every characteristic to be a great PT. And the fact that you just were like, you know what? Nah, not Wolves. Straight to Dubai. Bo, that you know what that's from? That's that 4 a.m. alarm mm -hmm. when you're a gas engineer and you're jumping down that motorway. You still had the same characteristics. Yeah, man. Whatever it takes, I'm going to do it. And you didn't think, I'm just going to touch it. I'm going to jump in there. Yeah. And that's that's the key here, like the element that you've jumped straight into there and that you're excelling. It's, it's, it's massive, bro. This massive. is it. Like, well, one of the key things I thought, you know, obviously, uh, Jamie, he's out yeah. there as well. Shout Big out to Jamie, Jamie as well if you're watching this. Yeah. <laughs> um, Literally, he's. I've been watching his like stories and stuff for five years, and the guy's killing it out there. Obviously, yeah. he's got fit squad, and um, for me, I just uh, you know I stayed in contact with him, and I says, "Jay, look, I've had enough of England, you know." Uh, and I says, "Shall I work in a pure gym or somewhere like that?" He goes, "No, nah, just jump on a plane." Yeah, man, <laughs> simple as that. But for me, I thought, you know what, it was a big move. Yeah, it wasn't in the pipeline. I wanted to, or like for the last few years prior to moving to Dubai. I wanted to live abroad, but I didn't know where. I was looking at Australia as well. Crazy, that is Yeah, it? but you know when you just have the thought and then you just yeah. get sucked back into work and you think, oh, yeah. it's just a, a dream that's never going to happen. Yeah. Um, but you know what? Uh, it was a jump for me. It was a big jump, a uh, huge responsibility. And all my life, uh, the number one thing here is that uh, comfort. You know, I've always been in that comfort zone. And it's like living at mom and dad's, don't yeah. have to worry about bills, don't have to do that. And that everything's changed. Like I've literally gone from that yeah. to paying my own bills, having yeah. to pay my own rent, having to pay my, uh, you know, my, my, my vehicle charges yeah. um, and just be, be a man basically, yeah. you know. How do you feel like going from one extreme to the other? How does that feel? Scary. Yeah. Yeah, very scary. But this is the thing, it's fear in it. Love you know? that. And, and, and the fear, you need to just just go through it because a lot of the majority of people, what they do is they they they... they, they they like to revert back to comfort. Not just that, though. It's a it's a natural human default setting as yeah. well. It's like our bodies are designed to revert to comfort, you know. And um, I just know that 
successful people like Jamie, for example, as well, like they, they have to be out of their comfort zone 100%. to do that and step straight through the fear 100%. and yourself as well. Yeah. yeah. You know? it's, it's, it's an interesting thing in it. Like fear is like, it's either going to hold you back or it's going to push you forward. You never, ever, ever will keep you in the same place. Exactly. And many people will be like, well, if I'm scared of something, I don't do something today, then I'll be in the same place as I am. Well, you're not, you're now a year later. So you're actually further back. And I'm glad that you were able to just take that and put it on your back and just push for. Yeah, man. It's, 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 it's vital. It's been difficult. It's not been easy. Yeah, obviously, social media portrays this yeah. image that, you know, Dubai is this and that. And, you know, um, but it's difficult, man. It's yeah. hard. But I just know that, you know, the only time you fail is when you quit. Yeah. And that's it, you know. Um, so people think success is like that, but it's not mm -hmm. linear, man. It's like the stock market, man. You have your yeah. ups, your, your retracements and whatnot as well, man. And that's life. Yes. You know, but it's acceptance. That's the key thing. Yeah. Accepting the fact of this is where I'm at and not doing the comparison thing. Yeah. You know, a lot of people do that. They compare their life to others and the grass is always greener. It's like, even even today for me, yeah. like, you know, I couldn't wait to get to England to see you. See you. <laughs> now the weather's shit, man. I can't wait to get back to Dubai. What happens to the, what happens to the, what happens to the present moment? Yeah. Is, you know. Um, Be present. Exactly. Definitely is. That, that literally has been me all year now. I have been present in the good times yeah. and in the bad because there's a lot to learn in both times. But at, at, at times I have lived life with, I, I'll sort it out tomorrow or I've lived life with, well, I'm going to be here next week and I, I don't enjoy what we've already achieved right here, right now. So I'm a massive believer in what you're saying. Let, let's, let's rewind a lot. I feel like I don't want to go too ahead of myself. I know that you know, your time is very important. So I'm making the most of it. You know, you're a busy guy, bro. <laughs> yeah, I've always got time for you, Sam. Always. <laughs> Love that, bro. Talk me through your childhood. Like, what was that like? Um, to be fair, I'm from um, a Sikh family. Yeah. Right? Um, my mum and dad ain't traditional, but yeah. my grandparent, my, my grandmother is, you know. And um, growing up, um, I was around uh, a little bit of dysfunction, yeah. you know, on my mum's side and... No, I hope she's not watching this. You know, obviously talking about this more. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, there's a bit of dysfunction, um, you know, and um, I was around a lot of um, alcoholism and addiction and stuff like that as well. Yeah. And, you know, a bit of, you know, family politics and stuff. And yeah. um, growing up, obviously, they say that the first seven years of your life, you're like a sponge. Yeah. And you absorb all things that you see and you look up to the people and the peers and the support around you. And you do exactly as that, you know, they're doing. And uh, for me, like, you know, addiction runs deep in my mum's side of the family, you know. So how did that impact you? Like, how did that For me, you? well, I was living in a multicultural area. Yeah. Okay. The, 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 the layers of the onion, it goes deep, man. Like, I was living in a multicultural area with Marines yeah. uh, and Pendiford. And um, literally, when I turned 13, my mum and dad, they moved to a predominantly white area, which yeah. is Wanborn. I was subject to quite a lot of racism. Yeah. So for me to be accepted by people that didn't really care about me, I had to be Jack the Lad, the clown. Yeah. So if they did one thing, I had to do the extra bit just to be liked. And this is where the the whole addiction thing started because obviously you, you, you were aware that I had a problem with alcohol and, uh, and drugs as well. And there's no shame in saying it. Yeah. You know. Um, How deep did that run? Deep, man. It's a progressive disease. You know, it's an illness and... Um, People are quick to criminalize addiction um, because it's classed as dirty needles and stuff yeah. like that. I never touched all that stuff, but, you know, um, cannabis, alcohol, even cocaine at, at one point as well, yeah. you know, um, and that's when my life started to take um, a heavy downward spiral, yeah. you know, uh, it's like that stuff takes your soul, man. And a lot of people are on it as well yeah. around here and, um, you know, I had to seek help. That was the bottom line. I had to seek help for that because I was in denial. I didn't think I had a problem. I was full of blame, resentment, um, anger at the world, that the world owes me something, you know, um, until I got hit my rock bottom. And when I hit a rock bottom and thought, you know what, I can't do this on my own. Um, and it's the best decision I've ever, uh, ever made, you know. Um, and now look at me, I'm living in yeah. Dubai, <laughs> living in Dubai, working, getting on with it, you know, yeah. functioning, being a uh, productive member of society. Love that, bro. You know, so, so is there like a symbolic moment that you can remember when you were like going through what you were going through? Is there a moment when you thought, this is it? Chaos. I wanted to take my own life. I couldn't see a way out. I could not see a way out. And I thought the, 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 the world would be better off without me here, you know, and that's self-pity. How old was you? 
probably about 23, 24. Yeah, man. Yeah, self-pity though, that's the number one thing. This is uh, all characteristics of the disease of addiction, you know, um, like, you know how cancer, yeah. you have um, like hair loss, um, sickness, nausea, they're all symptoms of the disease. Yeah. But if you look at addiction, what are the symptoms? Anger, resentment, self-pity, jealousy. But um, yeah, it's like you, you have uh, the characteristics and these are all the symptoms of the disease. Um, and the number one thing that addiction will tell you that the number one symptom is it will tell you that you don't have a disease. Yeah. And this is it. You have to treat it like a disease. And the medicine is doing self-inventory, looking at yourself, looking at behaviors, being around like-minded people who uh, have been down that path as well and have come out the other end and doing daily inventory and spot checks on yourself. Have I hurt anyone? Have I pissed anyone off? Um, am I... Um, I'm living to the best of my ability. Am I being kind? Am I being loving? You know, all these things. And if I don't, that's my medicine. And if I don't do that, then what happens is my behaviors can start to go off key, you know? So even though the the physical side of it, the yeah. addiction and the alcohol and stuff, that's just a physical part of it. But it's a, it's a, it's a mental illness. And this is it, man. And uh, I have to look at myself every single day. Otherwise, um, yeah. It's big that is, bro. It's big, man. You know, I'm not ashamed to talk about it, yeah. you know, and some people might be sitting there watching, thinking, why is this guy talking like that for? I'd never talk. But the thing is, this is the thing. I cared too much what people thought, which kept me in that that hole. Yeah. It's like the fear of what other people are going to think about me. And I lived my life like that for a very long time until the point was like, you know what? People are going to criticize you whether you do good. Yeah, people are oh. going to criticize you whether you do bad. You know, what are you doing it for them? Are you doing it for yourself? You know, Massive that is. Big thing, man. Yeah, that, that takes such a courageous person to say, even though they are watching, I don't care. Because you became naked, yet clothed. That's what you did. Your your habits were exposed. Your symptoms were wide. The voice that you spoke was heard, bro. Like they're seeing you. They're seeing how you're moving. But yet you still said, I don't care how I look in in the face of people who I don't know. And who in the face of people who I do know, because your your illness, I would say illness, needed to be cured. And you were willing and you were courageous enough to say, it's my time now. Yeah. There, 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 sorry to interrupt. There is there is no cure for this. There's never a cure. I'll always be an addict, just not an active addiction. Yeah. There's a big difference, you know. Uh it's a rest, uh, you know, the, the the disease can be arrested, but it'll never there'll never be a cure for it. You know, I have to continue to take my medicine, which is looking at myself daily inventory, connecting with people, honesty. That's a big one. I have a network of lads who, when things are going, like life happens, right? Even though there's no alcohol, it's never been about the drugs or the alcohol. It's always been about that. Yeah. You know, so if I can see my behavior starting to go off key, I have a network of people who I can pick up the phone to who will not judge me and say, look, you're behaving like a dickhead. These are the things that I suggest you do yeah. and follow them suggestions. But the thing is, ego held me back for a long time to stop me from doing that. You know, pride and ego, Pride, I'm too good to, to to be talking to be around these sort of people. But the reality was that was my ego and my arrogance because the people that I was like labeling druggies and whatever, they were doing something about their problem. Yeah. And I was in denial saying I don't need to be around that. It's deep, man. I could sit here and talk about this yeah. stuff for hours, bro. But I, I want to hear it, bro. Like, I, the, the key is people will look at us online, bro, and they'll be like, this person's got it together. That person's got it together. Actually, it's not always been that way. And actually, it isn't that way. Of course, all. it's not, man. You know, so <laughs> I wish it was. <laughs> Imagine, <Yeah. laughs> magic one treatment every time. Just abracadabra. Yeah. You know, but this is what it's about: taking off that mask, sitting in the chair that you sit in, and being extremely vulnerable again. Vulnerability. You just nailed it. Yeah. You know, and um, one thing I just wanted to add on the back of what you were saying, like I had to really come to the realization that I can't save my ass and my face at the same time. And all my life, I've been trying to save my face while my ass is being handed to me on a plate. You know, I need to save my ass so I can't save my face. You know, so f what people think, it's about what am I doing for my life moving forward and my family as well. Yeah. Aye. You know, it's massive, bro. So your, 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 your addiction that we spoke about, it really has framed who you are. Of course it has, man. I wouldn't change it for the world. I would not change it for the world. And, um, you know, it's, 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 it's given me so much resilience and again i'm not sat here you know with a halo on my head yeah i'm not perfect i still make mistakes i still i'm human right but at least i, I carry that awareness today and i would not have it any other way because what i have now yeah if i didn't go through all these things 
there's no way I'd, you know, all this outside Dubai and yeah. external stuff and relationships and getting my family back in my life and all that stuff, man. It's all, it's all external stuff, yeah. man. It's this stuff inside, man, you know, and like you need to work on that. And I worked on that before I even went to Dubai. Mad. You know. That, that's the thing, like, I spoke about this as well uh, a few weeks ago. Um, many people will walk into 2024 and they'll say, this is the year for me. But they haven't prepared. They haven't done their preparation before the year of 2023 ended. Mm. So then they walk into 2024 in the same mindset that they had that stopped them from progressing in 2023. But you had already worked on yourself prior to going to Dubai. You had already looked yourself daily into the mirror and said, I am great. I am going to battle this and I am going to continue to work on myself daily. You prepared that meal. And now you are eating from what you have prepared. This is phenomenal, bro. Because the position that you're in now, many people won't be there. They won't. Not as vulnerable and as honest as you're able to deliver. They won't. They will come in and they will keep the halo above their head. Straight away, you sat down and you said, Sam, look, I'm going to tell you. And that's what I need. Because when people now watch this, they're going to see, this is just another guy. They're not going to see this is, an, uh, this is, this is a robot. Because when I grew up, you know, I grew up and there's many people who I looked up to in my younger age. And I used to think, they never messed up. They're in this high position. Putting them on pedestals. Putting them on pedestals. Yeah, yeah. And then when they fell, I realized they were human. But we're making sure that people watch this and they see, well, we are all human. We all fall down, but not all of us get back up. I agree. Like what you just said about like people making New Year's resolutions. Yeah. Like... When I wanted to stop drinking alcohol, when I wanted to stop doing drugs, if you put a lie detector on me, I'd be telling the truth. Yeah, it would come up as this guy is telling the truth. Yeah, but that powerlessness over the the, the grip that it had on me, yeah. it'd just be a relapse and a relapse, and I'd stop for a few days and a relapse. It's the same with food. Yeah, exactly the same with food. You know, it's gotta you gotta look inwardly. You have to really make an honest admission to yourself that you know what I cannot do this on my own. Simple as that. You know, I thought I, I tried them avenues. I tried to make more money. Yeah. I tried changing careers, bouncing in and out of toxic relationships, all this stuff. And I was searching for the solution outside of me. Yeah. Rather than having this honest admission, surrendering. Yeah. Saying, you know what? I'm fucked. I can't do this on yeah. my own. I cannot do this on my own. And that was a very humbling moment. And then seeked help. And these people, you know, I hang around addicts yeah. my, in my spare time. They're not in act. They're not. They're not in active addiction, by the way. I'm hanging around <laughs> fucking crackheads. You know I mean? Yeah, man. But um, yeah, like, literally, these are recovering addicts. Yeah. You know, I've got a friend who, um, you know, he, he had nothing. He had a bin bag, heroin addict. He's been clean and so clean and sober now for I think over fifteen years. Wow. Yeah, got multi millionaire businesses all over Birmingham and stuff, man. It's just crazy, man. These are again outside things. People will hear that and think, yeah, man, I, I need to do this for that reason. To do it for your for, for the right reasons, yeah. you know, um, whatever that is to to every individual, everything aligned because he he made sure that he could be transparent, and that that's, that's a powerful move. Uh, like you're so relatable, I can see why you are a coach. You know, I, I can see it like the the passion, the journey, the level of understanding, the willingness to go above and beyond. Because when you work with a client, you see yourself daily, hundred percent. You know, I, I can, I can relate, and you know, I know how it is. You know, we can't expect clients to just be like robots. No. You know, and that's one thing when I first started out doing this stuff is like I brought a lot of my biases into this. Yeah. It was like you should be doing this and you should be doing that. No, it's what, what does the client want, man? Yeah. You know, they're paying you. They're paying you as a, a as a trainer to coach yeah. them, hold them accountable. But you've got to actually keep it realistic as well at the same yeah. time. It's easy for me to say to you now, Sam. The best exercise is a squat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. For, for me, it might be, but your your body anatomy might be better at hinging. Yeah. So an RDL might be better for you. Yeah. So I would never bring that advice into my client. I'll give them suggestions. Yeah. But, you know, they're all adults and we all got to make decisions. I love that. I love that. So I uh, I did see that you are a massive football fan. Oh, yeah. Mm. Who do you support? Wolverhampton Wanderers. Okay, okay, okay. Fan. I'm not wearing the shirt. Not wearing it today, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lip that up. Yeah. All right, no, nobody's perfect, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so how are they doing now? We're doing all right, man. Hit and miss. Hit and miss, bro. It's, um, yeah, we've, uh, it's hard work being a Wolves fan. Yeah. It's what we're winning at the minute. Come back for Christmas and uh, we've won two games in the bounce. I'm going to Everton away. Oh, sorry, Everton at home on Saturday. And then I'm flying back on the second of Jan. So mad, yeah, man. crazy, crazy. Yeah. What, what, what are your like 
goals for 2024? Have you written them down already? Or? Yes, I have. Love that. Yeah. Um, I've got um, a financial target that I want to hit. Yeah, love that. Um, there's a, a client target that I want to hit. Love that. Um, and I just want to be in a better position. They're, they're quite personal to me, to be honest, but I want to be in a better position than I was this year. Yeah. You know, but it's easy for my head to run away with it because even though it's been a year and a bit since I've been in Dubai, yeah, I, I still feel that I need to be here. Yeah. And you know, and it happens to me too, and I have to ground myself and bring it back to the present moment. Because then what can happen is I can start looking left and right. Yeah. Um, and comparing myself to the next man who's been doing it for 10 years, 15 years. Yeah. Yeah. And then I can fall into that trap. Trap of poor me, I'm not good enough. That yeah. self low self-esteem, low self-worth, you know. Um so yeah, I've got I've got them written down and uh, I'm moving towards them, man. I love that. You know, Robbie, when people sit in that chair, uh, as we conclude our podcast, we always ask them symbolic questions. One of the symbolic questions that we ask them is, what would you say to the 16 year old version of yourself, like right now? What What would you if if Robbie, who's 16, is sitting right there next to you? What would you say to them? Listen to your parents. That they might not deliver it in a way that we would want. And, you know, when I was 16, my head was truly up my ass. But listen to your parents, man. They have your best interest at heart, you know. And I think as that comes with a bit, bit of age as well. The older we get, um, they, they, they want the best because they've been through that. They don't want you to make the same mistakes as them. But if you're anything like me, yeah, I have to go through it and make the mistake not just once, a couple of times <laughs> to make sure that it's the wrong thing. You know? <laughs> but yeah, I've started to listen. You know, uh, even though I'm older and I'm living away from home now and stuff, you know, uh, they've got our best interests at heart. That's what I'd say to my 16 year old me. It's very interesting. I think this thing that we call life, the amount of people that we meet on our journey, is incredible. They're at all different stages of it. But time ticks regardless. Of course, man. Life's very short and I'm starting to realise that. I, I've been in Dubai for a year and a, a year and four months. And like since I've come back, I've really appreciated being around you guys, my family, and really been present. Yeah. You know, because like, everyone's getting older. Yeah. You know, and I'm, I'm in a different continent trying to build my hopes and dreams. Um, what happens to family and stuff, man. Um, so it's it's definitely short, man. It is. Um, so as we conclude this. Thank you very much. Thank you on so many levels. Yeah, man. It's been an absolute pleasure, bro. It has. It's For me, it's, it's the way you have just been so open, like an open book. I appreciate that a lot. I appreciate you taking time out to jump onto this podcast that we've got and just being vulnerable. And I hope that people that are watching can really see the real you, which is this guy here, you know. And if they do want to follow you, if you drop your handle again. Yeah, it's uh, Robbie's Health and Wellbeing. And you can follow that. Well, thank you very yeah, much. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. Have Sam. a great day.